run a Douglas fir dominant stand on my family's land near Oakville, Washington. And I want to take you through the same stand assessment process given the unique attributes of this particular stand. Uh, a little bit about its history. Our property was largely clear cut just before we bought it, about three years prior to before, before we purchased it, and all planted back to Douglas fir, uh, of which these trees uh, comprise that cohort. So they are about 26 years old or so. Uh, this stand has been gradually pre-commercially thinned over the intervening years, uh, which accounts for its, its current stocking density. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, the, the composition of this stand and walk uh, our way through the stand assessment process again. So starting with the composition, like I said, it's uh, Douglas fir dominant. Uh, but even given that, as I look around, there is some diversity in the stand. I see some bitter cherry. There's a little bit of big leaf maple. Uh, there's some cascara uh, in a gap. Uh, there's a little bit of red alder in here. Uh, all of those species we deliberately retained as we were pre-commercially thinning, both for biodiversity uh, and we also know that maintaining alder and maple in particular intermixed with Douglas fir improves the overall growth of the fir. Um, the stocking density in here, we've thinned it down to right around a little over 200 trees per acre. And looking at a stand density index uh, for Douglas fir, given the average diameter in here of about 10 inches, uh, the fir should be running, the stocking density should be running about 260 to 300 trees per acre. Uh, we've thinned it a little bit lower than that. Um, that's just kind of what happened is we cut out some of the defect uh, in the stand. Uh, but uh, given that, um, the, we're keeping the stand in a really optimal growth. And uh, I'll point out one of the factors for that as we look up at the canopy here. Uh, if you look at the live crown ratio on all of the remaining trees that we've retained here, the live crowns on most of these trees are 60 plus percent, uh, which means that all of the trees are in a very robust growth phase right now and will continue on that growth phase for, for quite a few years to come. Uh, the canopy composition is very homogeneous, again, largely given that this is a single cohort of Douglas fir. Uh, the canopy is very simplified. There's really only a single strata um, since it's a, a, a single age stand. Um, but that's what you get when you start working with a, uh, a plantation. <clears throat> Like I mentioned, the age of the stand also is very homogeneous. It's all about 26 years old, with the exception of some of the alder and maple, maple that's naturally seeded in here uh, over time. Um, looking at timber quality, again, since we've pre-commercially thinned this, we've cut out most of the defect, any storm damage, and there was a, a fair bit of storm damage, uh, mostly top breakage uh, from ice storms in, in years past. Uh, but all the remaining trees, by and large, are straight. Uh, they do retain a lot of limbs, uh, but given Douglas fir and the, the relatively dense canopy, those limbs are starting to die off, and we have begun a little bit of pruning in here uh, to improve timber quality. I'm seeing some spike knot in some of the trees, which is a limb that's coming in at a very acute angle, and that does create some defect. Um, but... Uh, you got to work with what you have. Uh, forest health, looking around, I'm not seeing any obvious signs of forest health issues. Uh, all of the crowns look lush and green. I'm not seeing a lot of cone set, which could be an indication of either drought stress uh, or root rot. I'm not seeing any dead trees in here or patches of dead trees, which also, again, could be an indicator of root rot. So uh, no invasive species. No obvious signs of, of uh, insects. So overall, I'd say the forest health is, is in quite good shape here. Uh, looking at the understory composition, though, this is very different from the older stand that we were just in. Um, as you'll see, it's a very simplified understory, and that's largely because of the dense canopy. 
uh, given how little sunlight is coming through here, first of all, uh, there's very little understory diversity. Uh, the understory is largely comprised just of a sword fern. I see a little bit of Oregon grape. There's some trailing blackberry. Um, really where the diversity increases is in some of the canopy gaps where I'm seeing some cherry and cascara and elderberry. There's a little bit of hazelnut uh, in here, but both kind of a lack of diversity and also the lushness, the, the abundance uh, is, is much lower uh, given the, the dense canopy. Uh, wildlife habitat, uh, given the simplified understory diversity, not a lot of forage in here. Uh, there are really effectively no dead trees, so therefore no, no snags for cavity dependent species. Uh, given that this is a, a third generation uh, forest, there are no large down logs remaining anymore. Any of the old stumps that used to be here have dissolved into nothingness long ago. So I would say that habitat overall is also very, uh, very simplified. Probably what this is best for is cover and shelter uh, for birds and deer to bed down, but that's about it. Uh, the last remaining attributes of the stand aspect, uh, we're on a southwest facing aspect topography. There's a, a little bit of slope here, but otherwise relatively uh, modest topography. Uh, soils, we're still on these, uh, these clay loam soils. The reason that the Douglas fir did better up here and we have alder down lower in the landscape uh, is that being at a higher elevation and up at the uh, top of the hill, it's drier. So Douglas fir uh, has done a, a much better up here than on the lower, wetter soils. So that's an overall uh, stand assessment. What we'll probably do with this stand now, given the, the modest stocking density, the ample live crowns, is let this grow for at least another five to eight years. Try to get these diameters up more in the 14 to 16 inch uh, DBH range, diameter breast height. And then at that point, consider uh, a commercial thinning.